Today's project is the start of putting the convertible top on the convertible frame. Here's the frame pretty much restored, uh, including the uh, screws that hold it on each side into the um, weld nuts on the inside of the B post area. And uh, in order to put this frame on, you have to have the back vinyl uh, cards in place. So this had to go first with the holes lined up and then the back back of the frame got in. Once that's in there, the frame is quite solid when it's screwed into the front. Um, had to restore the wood, get a new piece of ash wood for the front, which I got from Scarborough Fair. Fits very nicely. Uh, of course, new screws here and new copper inserts in here and it's mounted quite solidly on the windshield. So the first step for um, putting the convertible top on is putting this sheet here which wraps around the front wood and the frame as it's screwed. The frame is continues around here in metal and is screwed up into here. Well, all new screws. The uh, main purpose of this first flap is there's a weather strip along the bottom edge here. It hangs down here and its purpose is to go about the length of the chrome but not cro encroach onto the glass and it keeps rain from getting up and underneath. So that is being attached and uh, one of the things you have to do going across here is very straightforward except that the board that's in the front kind of curves down like this so when you figure out where to staple the front edge you have to kind of push in like this so that there's enough material that's wrapping around the front and then you staple it. You kind of have to have to pinch it. Otherwise if you I actually know this from having done it the wrong way and then had to take all the staples out is that if you just hang it down here and staple it up here and don't push in here to allow for a little room here it tends to pull it up too far because there's no material left to go around the curve. So I made that mistake and I have just fixed it and I am now finishing the wrap around. When you wrap it around you'll see over here that Carol uh, cut holes in the end to allow the the thumb screw to go through. It has the hole has to be big enough. There's a little boss on the frame. It has to be big enough not just to have pass the screw but also to go around the boss on the frame so that you can then bring this vinyl up, or in my case canvas, up and smartly around the ends. As you can see I'm going to finish this over here along with the end over here and that'll be the first part, probably the hardest part, of putting the top on. Okay, that's the finished wrap or on the top of the windshield. Here's the rear metal piece that goes inside the a slot in the convertible top and mine was fitting uh, with great difficulty into the chrome retainers over here. Probably a little too much chrome or I painted this thing a little too high so I ground down just a little bit to make it thinner where it goes in. I also was not conforming at all to the shape of the body so I bent it to kind of conform. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, leaving a pretty even maybe eighth of an inch uh, gap between where that rail sits and the body assuming that the convertible material underneath is going to take up some space. So we're going to try that on the first fit and see if it goes in. Here's my assistant Carol making sure we've got the center line in the front of this beautiful Robbins canvas top that's already looking beautiful. The back where I was showing you with the rail went inside and fits beautifully along the curve of the body of the car. Thank you. Okay so I've not gone in the usual conventional order here because I'm going to a car show and I don't have time to finish the work here. But I wanted to put these two screws in the back so that when I so that I can fold up the
top for now and then I will deal with the rest of it next week. Okay, here's Maggie dressed up in her beautiful Robins, uh, I think it's called Stay Fast. It's a canvas top. This, here's the Hydem binder going across the front. Down below here you can see the uh, this one's a little, just, it'll, it'll drop down. This is that flap that comes in the part that wraps around the wood in the front that keeps water from getting up and through. Seals everything off. Just like the Hydem binder seals all the staples in the back. Now this top, I've just come back from a car show looking at some vinyl tops that were on some of the cars there. This piece here seems to be a little bit to the rear, but I don't think we could have pulled the top uh, much farther forward when we were making it. It might be a little bit too far to the rear because this part over here that's going to go over this turnbuckle, I'm going to, well, it's got enough material, but it's going to have to be pulled pretty far forward. This car is, was folded over the weekend. We thought we had a nice warm day today, so we thought we'd bring it up. And as you can see, plenty of visibility. So we're very happy with the result. You can see here the two screws that go into the rear bow. There's one there. And there's one over there. And uh, that's all that goes through it. Down here is the bar inside the top. The little bit of time I spent fussing was getting the shape of that bar and location of it was well worth it because it slides right in now and even with the canvas on it and it's sealing very well to the car. I'm happy with that. Haven't put the uh, lift the dots or the turnbuckles in yet. That's next. As you can see, I've been making progress putting in the uh, metal clips, one turnbuckle and two lift the dots. And I'm going to show you quickly how I've been doing it. Uh, I bought this um, hole punch set from Harbor Freight for nine bucks. It's on Amazon for twenty-three, uh, but uh, at Harbor Freight it was only nine dollars. I'm using the five sixteenths hole punch as recommended by MGA Guru. You can see over in here it's hollow, already sharpened, makes a nice little round hole. I backed up behind where I'm going to drill it with a piece of fairly soft wood and um, uh, a knee pad and just to protect the, the car because I don't want to mess up my paint. And so that's what the knee pad looks like. And now I've marked the spot on this beautiful canvas top with a little bit of white out and I'm going to drill the hole. This is what the lift the dot fasteners look like. Um, you've got the top part like that with prongs on the other side and then the backing plate. They both have uh, a marking on them that says dot so that you can line them up dot on the outside on both of them. Um, and uh, get the right orientation. MGA Guru said to line them up with the dot towards the outside of the canvas or towards the seam. That's what I've been doing, but actually I think it might have been easier to do it, uh, might have been better as far as putting it on and off to do it a slightly different orientation with them. The way I found them on my uh, old convertible top, which had them twisted 90 degrees from that. Uh, but I, it, it goes on and off uh, so far, the ones I've got in there quite easily. So. I don't think it matters too much for that. So over on the left side here I've attached the turnbuckle and the first lifted dot fastener. So here's the general technique that I found that's working the best so far. First I uh, locate, pull the canvas so that the pin underneath that the lifted dot pin is going to attach to is right over a hole. I mark it with a little white out and then I use the hollow drill tool that I got from Harbor Freight here and a piece of backup wood, soft wood and a, a knee pad underneath it so I don't harm the paint and I drill down through and you get the hole just like that. Then I'm just going to use the lift the dot fastener over it as a guide 
uh, to where to uh, where to make the uh, pins go through. The pins are not pushing through for me very easily, so what I've been doing is one at a time push a pin and then use a small drill to drill a hole through where the pin is. Not too big, but big enough to get it started. Okay, there's the dot pushed in. Pins. coming through and we're going to put the backing plate on in the same orientation as the top one. Dot down here and dot down here flipped around the other way. So there we have it. Three lifted dots and one turnbuckle. And a pretty good fit here. Okay so here's the final result of Maggie's convertible top and here's a shot of the side screens. They, uh, these side screens are about seven or eight years old. I bought them on sale from Moss a long time ago. And uh, they come with a little assembly required. And uh, that's because they have, I can open this up, and show you the inside. So the assembly points are, there's a pin over here on the end. And this pin goes down into a hole the door and then of course there's the bracket that secures it to the door and there's this support bracket over here that goes up. Some of those <clears throat> require a little careful patient cajoling and then they get in. Um, on this particular one, on the one on the right side actually went in quite easily. On this particular one this didn't line up very well with this and um, what they do is they caution you if you're going to make any adjustments to any of these parts like for example on both side screens I had to bend the pins you don't do it while it's attached to the to the side screen you take it off put it in a vise and then adjust it and then reassemble it back on otherwise you're going to do damage to the side screen so uh, in this one here I had to actually go inside Oh, that's, haven't undone that in a while. It's pretty tight. I had to go inside here where the groove is that goes over the bolt. And mine wasn't lining up, so I just ground it uh, to make a little clearance there. And then I also, uh, then I painted the, where I ground it. Even, so it's no longer chrome plated in where it slips in. Uh, you have to sometimes do a little bit of adjustment of the rubber. Um, but uh, on the outside, I'll show you that. These uh, particular side screens have a little bit of a stiff stiffness on the front part but not on the back and actually I'm kind of happy with that because I don't want the front part to come uh, to open up by itself while I'm driving. I've found since I put these on that I have a very nice fit around the around the top. There's uh, there's no uh, leaks coming in when I take a ride. And over here is where you had to do a little, just a little bit of trimming uh, of the rubber. If you don't trim it, then it has a tendency to fall down and get caught inside the door. As they said in their instructions, it might foul the door. But it just took a little bit of trimming. You want to make sure the rubber seals well. Now, I did have a problem, which I attribute to the convertible top, actually, uh, over on the other side here. I, th I think I showed you when I was uh, talking about the assembly of the top that I thought this little flap that comes down here inside uh, was a little short. I think you can see it right here. It did not come all the way up to the to the front stanchion and there's a hole in here. I can stick my finger in there. So uh, I suppose uh, one might conclude that maybe I should have pulled the convertible top farther forward but uh, there's a good, I don't know, pretty good, uh, pretty good gap there. And I've noticed that when I'm driving the car, I do get some wind noise through there. I'm going to fix that by putting a piece of Velcro over it on the inside so that it covers the hole while I'm driving and it can easily be removed uh, when I don't have the side screens, side screens mounted. So that's the uh, final thing to do with a convertible top. 
it's beautiful and I'm uh, very happy with it.